And I've got, there it is there. I've got it off because I've got new everything. A new gasket, uh, a new exhaust manifold, a new downpipe, or whatever it's called, and then a new exhaust system. And, oh, a new cat. And yes, I know you're just saying it's antique, you don't need cat and everything, but I don't know, I took the cat off the Toyota, the antique. And it's just, uh, they're these the fumes that these cats um, keep from getting in the atmosphere, like it also keeps your eyes from like burning. So, and it smells a lot less potent. So anyways, I got all new components. And it was relatively cheap, I think. This was, all this whole assembly here was like 87 bucks. That was like, 70 don't quote me this was expensive though this is about a hundred dollar bill and then the manifold i don't remember how much this one cost but i think it was about 50. so i got maybe about 350 or maybe 400 bucks into the exhaust no i don't know less than that and then i got about 400 in the fuel system because the hanger was like 100 bucks pump was like 99 dollars the fuel sender gauge was like 115, so that was 300 bucks just to get the fuel system going. But I'm doing it right. Everything is Toyota. Everything is OEM. There's no knockoffs. There's no jerry rigging. There's no making something fit from a Chevrolet. None of that crap. So I also bought a new seat upholstery cover. And then, but to put it on, I'm going to pull the seat. It's got a bench seat. So I'll pull the bench seat. And then why do I, am I going to pull the bench seat? Is that's because I want to get the, the floor carpet off. And it, man, it, look at that. That's all crusty. It's a solid piece. So I'm, so I'm going to pull, pull the whole floor off. Pressure wash it. Clean it. And hopefully I can make that floor pop. My buddy Aaron did that. And it was like night and day difference. Now they sell these whole new entire floor kits. And they're, they're actually reasonable. I bought one for the Toyota RV. I don't remember how much it cost. But I think it was like 120 bucks or something. And then you, it's already pre-cut and everything. You just drop it in. And really the only thing you need to do is remove the seat. And maybe the shift boots. And that carpet just lays right in. Oh, and these, these door sills. And that's just uh, four Phillips heads. So I've got the receipt. The seat's going to be recovered. I've got a plan to do that. I need to detail this because that's just, when I drive it on rides, just dust and stuff flies in my eyes and it's a pain in the butt. Let's take a look at the exhaust system and why I pulled it. Well, there's the very end of the muffler. I mean, the, this, uh, the most end of the exhaust pipe. Look in it. Oh, you know, it doesn't look bad when you're looking in it. Oh, so these bolts were an absolute nightmare. And I've got some rust uh, fighting stuff on there. But if you look real close, not only are they rounded off, but that was because I rounded them off when I put the exact nut, uh, I mean, socket on there. But then they're super rounded off because I used a broken bolt extraction tool on there which has teeth on it, and that, those rounded it off even more. And then, if you notice, guess what I cut in the middle of it to make it a flathead fit or something I could pry on it, and that didn't get it done. The only thing I really didn't do was, you know, when you heat it up with a torch and then try and do that, but uh, whatever. I just pulled the whole thing off, which was just, I got these bolts out by a miracle, and then these were just held on by the rubber hangers. And this right here, is what goes or what was going into the end of the exhaust and obviously that was a failure and this <clears throat> the previous owner, owner told me about this this was it's held onto three bolts this is where the two pipes 
go into the four exhaust doodads. But this was only being held on by like one bolt, half of a bolt, this one was loose, and it was just causing all the exhaust leaks that, do, that you know of. And the only thing, other thing I gotta work on is the, um, the O2 sensor, the exhaust sensor or whatever. But that's it, I got all that stuff. So it's all, from this point on, it's all bolt on. But I gotta clean up this, this, this thing and then put the gasket on. And other than that, the truck is running fantastic. I've already been off-roading in it. But I'll keep you posted. Update. It's been a few weeks or months now. I don't remember anymore. Uh, that I've got both of these. So the current update is this one is running great. I have a new exhaust on it, and uh, the brakes have been fixed. The brake cylinder has not been replaced yet, but I've got that. The next thing for this one is the speedometer cable needs to be done, and the driver's side window needs to be fixed, and the passenger side door won't open from the inside. And the Scout. The Scout is the distributor's fixed, the ignition's working. I did the points system for an electronic uh, ignition upgrade. Not a new distributor, just the inside. I've changed all the fluids. I still need to do a transmission fluid flush. The front and rear diffs need to be done. I bought the new seals for them. We'll do that soon. And the other day I was driving it and it did have what seemed like a vapor lock after the engine heat up. So I gotta figure that out. Lost all power. But I let it cool for a little bit and it came back on. So let me show you how to do everything. Okay, so today we're doing uh, s steering components for the Toyota. Everything was worn, everything had play on it, so I'm just fixing it all. Uh, new pitman arms, new that thing, <laughs> new tie rod ends, inners and outers, even I even bought new uh, thingies. So, it's taking me about a full day, a day and a half to do the pitman arm. And if you've ever done a pitman arm, you already know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and show you what was, uh, what had to happen. So, I bought one of these from AutoZone, and I put it on there, I started cranking on it, and pop! Broke right off right here. When we exchanged it, that was last night, today, and of course, all the meantime, I'm PB blasting, I've hammered and hammered, Today I bought uh, exchange it for another one, but right on there did two cranks on it. Boom! Started breaking again. So if you look closely, you can see where I didn't give a damn. And first I started just rewelding this. Of course it's like a cast steel or something. So it's uh, and and that still started bending. So I was like, screw it weld every because this is getting replaced the whole pitman arm so i you know you can just trash it so i welded the whole bracket to the pitman arm all the way around and then cranked on it and then this thing used to be a lot straighter but uh and this used to have a zerk on it but you used to say 50 to 1000 hammer hammerings and it came off and uh, there's where it came from right there so that is off, um, and I've got I've got this one already up. You can tell it's all shiny and new. It's loose right here, so I can just set the um, the toe ins and toe outs or whatever. Um, so and I also have I also bought a new uh, steering stabilizer. And as I'm down here, and so every part of the steering is, is being replaced. And it's, they're not really expensive. They're just, the tie rod ends were like, 
you know, six, seven, eight dollars, and you need four of those, <clears throat> and then you need a new drop steering thingy there, and that was like 13 bucks. I think the steering stabilizer was $19, so, but as I'm down here, and as I was off-roading the other day, I had, I was full left and right lock, and I heard some popping, so I'm wondering if this, um, I guess they're called CV axles, or constant velocity, maybe, if these are going out, and then if I look down here, this has a little bit of uh, I can't I can't simulate the rocking, but that looks like those um, I guess they're called ball joints. They might need to be replaced soon. Oh, and I bought all new shocks. I don't think I'm going to put those on today because it's already getting hot. I'm tired. You know how it goes. One day at a time with restoration, right? And. And of course, another project that I need to do is the brakes on this one. Not only is it leaking from some unknown location, um, but when you brake the front left, which is this one, it grips too hard and it steers you to the left. So, let's finish up the steering today. And... And then I'll show you, a bit. Uh, I'll try and film here as I go, a little bit as I go. Okay. Oh, and I got Moog, M-O-O-G, replacement parts, and I don't know if those are the OEM ones or not, but they were a little bit more expensive. They sold tie rod ends for like three or four dollars on rockauto.com, but I went for the ones that were like twelve dollars that had a greasable zerk on them, because, you know, I want these to last for a long time. So, we'll see. Alright, let me get back to it and I'll catch you up. Okay, I got the inner and, inner and outer tie rods, inner and outer tie rods on the right side. I got this new drop Pittman arm thingy mabobber hooked up. I got a new steering stabilizer in place. A new pitman arm, it has not been torqued down yet, and no inner and inner and outer tie rods on the left side. So now the only thing left to do is to put the uh, whatever that bar is that connects them all together up and then torque everything and then we will zero the steering. So my, currently my steering wheel is like far left. And then I have to make sure that I'm not toe in or toe out and or do a the string alignment trick where you run the strings to the back tire and make sure everything's flat and then we'll be done brand new full uh, steering components